it's, a, it's again about the interior boundary points. Uh, we need to find the interior boundary points for this set. Uh, yeah, and uh, it's a direct argument. There will be another argument, which I call indirect argument, a little bit later. But first, I'd like to discuss with the direct argument, and that's the, let's just, let's just try to do that. It resembles a lot what we just did for the, for the ball. In that, in that proof, the main, the main step was choosing delta and indicating this triangle inequality, which works. Here, there also, the, the, here will be some other important steps, and I'll try to emphasize them. So let's just try to do that. I'll fix a point in this set. Oh, well, with just the claim we're proving. The claim is that this set is open. This set is open, so every point in this set is interior. So every point in this set comes together with some ball around it. And so the actual content of the presentation will be presenting the radius for such ball. So I'm choosing a point which, which belongs to this set, so it's subject to this condition. The components of that point are subject to this condition. Yeah. And I will, what I will do, I will present a ball around this point of some radius, and I'll present the radius such that the whole ball will be also subject to this condition. It will be part of this set. Okay? For that, I'll, I'll introduce this auxiliary number, epsilon, which will be this number. It's a positive number, isn't it? Because, because of this condition, it's a positive number. So look what I'm going to do. I'm going to take another point, B, Yeah. I will take another point with components x1, x2, x1, y1, sorry. I will make an assumption that my point is delta distance away from A, even though I haven't chosen delta. I will choose delta a little bit later, but delta will be this distance, my point B away from A. And I'm going to analyze this first. Even before I chose the delta, I'm going to analyze this inequality a little bit, and then I present the choice for delta. Look at this. So if I analyze this, we know how we compute the Euclidean distance. That's how we compute the Euclidean distance. Yeah. From this inequality, I can say this. Uh, the, dis uh, the difference of x and x1 just by itself is less than the whole sum, is less than the Euclidean distance. So from here, I can say that we have this inequality. And similarly, I can say that we have inequality for the second difference, y and y1, all of them individually less than delta. So look at this. Uh, yeah, we'll just, we'll just do this. Uh, if you don't mind, I'll consider this difference for a while, uh, which is for now. Uh, x, x squared take x1 squared. I will introduce these two extra terms. Take xx1 and plus xx1. And that will let me do factorization of this type. Right? Because we have a common factor x here, and we have a common factor x1 here. Yeah. Now, this inequality, that the difference between x and x1 less than delta, it tells me that the absolute value of x1 doesn't exceed the absolute value of x plus delta. It's a triangle inequality here. It's a triangle inequality here. And so, look what I'm going to say now. If I put the absolute value around this expression, it will be the same as uh, the same if I put the absolute value on here and here with the less or equal sign. It's a triangle inequality. For absolute value of x, I will keep it. For absolute value of x1, I will replace it with this piece. So if I do that, that's what I'm going to end up with. This x replaced with the absolute value of x. This difference replaced with delta from here. This x1 replaced with the right-hand side here. This one replaced with delta again. So first term here delivers this term, and this delta delivers delta squared. This follows. Yeah. 
if you combine these two together, that's what we end up with. All of these estimates that were given for the X component, I can do similar estimates for Y components. I say similar, I'm hiding the details by these dots. Similar estimates for the Y components will look like this. Now, time has come to make a choice for delta. I told you before, we, two, we take two points, A and B, at the distance delta, and we just postpone the choice of delta for, for, a little, for a little while. First, we did some estimates for the difference of squares here and for the difference of squares here. Now, I will choose my delta. Look at this. It will be a big choice, but you will see why we make such a choice. Here's a choice for delta. If I choose such a delta, it's a minimum of three numbers, one of them like that, one of them like that, and one of them like that. The important thing about this choice of delta is that it's always positive, because every component here is positive. And, it's always at, and it is independent of my B point. B point doesn't appear here. Components of A point, yes, they are, X and Y, but B is totally ruled out from here. Now look what I can say now. If I set such a delta, it gives me this. If I take the difference between X1 square and y, Y1 square, I'm checking this condition now for the point B. If I check that, look what I'm going to say. I split it in three combinations, like this. Difference of x and y, and then these two brackets. If you cancel things out, it will be exactly this. But I do this because for this bracket, I have some control. Here it is. And for this bracket, I have some control. Here it is. So I'm going to use this control now. Look at this. Less or equal, this difference, I keep it as it is. Then comes this bracket, then comes this bracket in absolute value. If you replace a number with the absolute value, the expression becomes larger. That's why we have this inequality here. I continue. For this bracket, we have this control. And for, this, for the second bracket, we have similar control. All of them combined here. And now my choice of delta start to work. Look at this. This choice of delta now start to work because this term, I can because delta is a minimum of these three numbers, it's certainly less than this. But if you replace it in this position, if you replace your delta with this first part of my minimum, which will make the expression larger, if you replace that, absolute value of x will cancel this bracket. I mean, it will be less than one number. 6 and this 2, it will give me this. Look at this. First one I keep. Oh, well, actually, I didn't say I keep. This one is replaced by, or you probably, I don't know if you remember what the epsilon was. It was at the top of my slide. Here it is. Oh, I can't open it. Epsilon was here. Remember, that's how I set my epsilon. If you solve here for this bracket, it will be, this bracket will be a one take epsilon. And now I use that. I just replace this one on one take epsilon. For this delta, I use the first element of my minimum. If I just use, if I only use the first one, delta the expression becomes larger. That's why probably I should put here the lesser equal. Ah oh no, yeah, lesser equal. It's just not, not the equal sign. Lesser equal. Oh, actually, I did some arithmetic here in one in one step. So. If I replace this delta with the first component here, it will be epsilon on 3. No. It will be epsilon on 3. If I replace this delta with the second one here, it will be another epsilon on 3. If I replace this delta square with this expression for delta, it will be another epsilon on 3. So actually, it's a, it should be here 3 times by epsilon on 3. Oh, I even miscalculated a little bit. Come with. Well, 
yeah, well, everything is correct, but uh, now I see that my choice for Uppsala not really good. I should have chosen here on 12. Look at this. I should have chosen here 12. 12. And 12. Almost 12. That's how I should have chosen it. Because in that, on that case, it will make it epsilon on 6 here. And then it will be epsilon on 2 here. And that's the value less than 1. And what do we see? We see that x1 squared take y1 squared less than 1. That is the condition which ensures that the point comes from the set S. 